today, x86 beats out ARM. AMD has got to chill with these prices. Ryzen 9000 is finally getting fixed, and Nvidia is throwing out their RTX 4000 series for next gen. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Intel's upcoming Lunar Lake CPUs are finally getting benchmarked. And this is a really big deal because these CPUs are a massive release for Intel. They're set to challenge not only AMD in the low power notebook market, but they're also aiming at ARM. Don't forget that this is actually personal for Intel versus Apple because the company effectively kicked all of Intel's CPUs out of their Macs and MacBooks and replaced them with their ARM M chips. So this really is a big deal for them. And according to this new video that originally comes from Lenovo about their upcoming Yoga Slim M7i or Edition Notebook. And as you can see, this is specifically testing battery life. So let's go through this. This is the Yoga Slim 7i or Edition, and it talks about all day battery life and compares it to a laptop with an M2 and a laptop with an M3. Of course, these are MacBooks. We know what laptop they're talking about. But as you can see, it actually beats them here. We're talking 18 hours and 19 minutes with 18 hours, 32 minutes versus 23 hours and 54 minutes. And that is actually a pretty big deal. You can see right here, this is showing it. And ultimately, this makes upwards of 30% more battery life than Apple's own MacBooks. With that said, don't forget that you have to account for the size of the battery as well as the efficiency, the full range of clocks, not just easy workloads like video playback. So this doesn't cover every scenario, but at least with this test, it definitely looks like it's good news for Intel's next-gen CPUs. And ultimately, I'd argue that this is good news for x86 in general, just because the general consensus was that x86 simply isn't as good at power efficiency versus ARM. But this sort of tips that on its head. Time, as always, will tell. But if you don't like waiting around, learn the intricacies of CPUs to find out for yourself. And there's no better way to get started with computer science than today's sponsor. Brilliant, the one place I go to when I'm ready to learn something new in computers, like their course on large language models that power all your favorite AI chatbots. And yes, that includes ChatGPT. But they also have tons of courses like their mini courses on programming, visualizing data, and so much more. Not to mention they have one of the best mobile apps I've ever Ever seen. And the best part is that when you visit my link at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, they're offering my viewers a 30-day free trial. So if you haven't checked it out yet, there's nothing to lose. Plus, when you use my link, you'll get 20% off your annual premium. Once again, visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld for 20% off and a free trial. And next up for today, we're starting to get some finalized pricing for AMD's next-gen X870 motherboards. As you can see right here, this story originally comes from B&H, where Gigabyte's boards were listed with pricing. And given the fact that this is B&H, these are likely the final prices. Now, moving up here, this puts them in order of the lowest to most expensive. And as you can see, prices aren't as bad as what was sort of being leaked earlier, but they're still not great. Now, I ended up trying to go back and see what the X670 motherboards were from Gigabyte when they originally launched, just because I think that's the best way to really compare prices. And they were fairly similar to these, so pricing isn't all that bad, but don't forget that honestly, we're getting almost nothing new with these. Maybe higher memory overclocking, but as I've said multiple times, that really isn't much of a big deal given how the Infinity Fabric clocks and the memory controller clocks interact after you reach past 6,000, but still, that may potentially be a reason to buy, except for the fact that the X600 series boards are now cheaper than they were when they originally released. For example, if we look over here at Newegg, the current X670 EA Aorus Master is $400, while the X870 EA Aorus Master is $100 more. So, of course, I will say that we should likely wait and see exactly what all the specs on all of these are before completely definitively saying that you should just buy last gen, but from everything that I've seen so far, that is definitely where I'm looking. 
And next up, AMD's finally fixed a pretty major issue with the Ryzen 9000 series since their original launch. This is something that I went over a little while back, and of course, if you like to keep up to date with all the latest PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to GamerMelt. Either way, if you didn't see that video, basically, what reviewers found pretty early on with the Ryzen 9000 series release is that latency, specifically latency between different chiplets when they're talking, is massive. We're talking over double the latency of last gen's Zen 4 based CPUs. At the time, this was a pretty big deal until luckily AMD announced that this is actually a bug or just an issue that basically can be fixed with software. Well, it looks like that fix is finally here. As you can see right here, it says the Ryzen 9000 intercore latency has been significantly reduced with their new Agisa 1202 update, meaning this has been fixed with the BIOS update. And as you can see right here, this is what it was before the update. We're looking at 197, 180, 184. I mean, pretty big latencies we're talking about here. But then after the update, those have been cut in half. Basically, if you own a Ryzen 9000 CPU and your motherboard maker has a new BIOS update with this Agisa included, you definitely want to install it. Now, when it comes to actual performance differences, unfortunately, we really don't have much. As you can see right down here, the video cards reported on this, and basically one person was able to test it within Cinebench R23's multi-core test, and they got an increase of roughly 400 to 600 points, which may sound like a lot, but keep in mind, that we're only talking around a 1% increase. With that said, of course, different benchmarks utilize the cross CCX communication in different ways. Some of them don't really do it often. Some do it all the time. But with that said, we may not see much of a difference because at least according to Tom's hardware, as you can see, it says, however, these latency changes were not created without cause. According to Y Cruncher's author, one of AMD's architects revealed that the high latency regression in Zen 5 resulted from new tuning parameters they implemented to help boost performance in workloads the company was testing against. The only problem with AMD's tuning was that it did not reportedly account for synthetic benchmarks, meaning there's a chance that we really won't see any real world performance difference here simply because if this is true, the only reason the benchmarks were so bad was because they were in a synthetic benchmark and they just hadn't worked really well to tune it to work with that. But of course, there could be some things that they overlooked and now this potentially fixes it. Either way, it does look like this one issue has been solved. And lastly for today, it looks like NVIDIA is finally gearing up to release their next-gen 5000 series GPUs. Specifically, we're talking their next-gen RTX 5090 and 5090D. This story originally comes from the Chinese board channels forum, where at least according to this machine translated text, it says this, there is no clear public information about the discontinuation plan of the 4090 and 4090D, but, it's expected that NVIDIA will officially discontinue the 4090 and 4090D series in October and will gradually digest the inventory after November until the 5090D is launched to take over. Basically, if you were hoping to pick up one of NVIDIA's RTX 4090s, you may want to do that because they may not be there for all that long. Though, of course, if you were planning on that, you may be better off just waiting for their next-gen GPUs. Because at least according to this, it's pretty clear that NVIDIA is gearing up to release the, specifically, the RTX 5090 and 5090D. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs? Are you planning to pick up, say, an RTX 5090? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.